Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts, whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The next day, the crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your kingdom is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. He who comes in the name of the Lord, in the name of Christ, amen.
Most dear son went up, went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon a cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the Festival of Unleavened Bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during, during the festival, or there, there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii, and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me, for you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray Jesus to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. 
they began to be distressed and to say to one another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the wine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly, I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. Then they went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated and said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and scribes and elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to Jesus at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death. But they found none, for many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him, we heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, 
and in three days I will build another, not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophecy! The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed, and the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse and swore with an oath, I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate said to him, are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Peter to do for them according to, ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. And he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, after flogging Jesus, handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him out of the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort, cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, saying, Hail, Hail King, King of, of the, the Jews! Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry the cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. When they had brought Jesus out to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull, 
And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him, divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide which each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You would destroy the temple and build it in three days? Save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elisha. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elisha will come down to take him. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man is God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance, among them Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James, the younger, and Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provide for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the, king, for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead. And summoning a centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph brought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. Please be seated. <clears throat> Hosanna, we say, which means save us, we pray. God save us. What a world. I had a moment of solidarity with one of my favorite movie characters this past week when I was thinking about those words, what a world, remembering the Wicked Witch of the West in The Wizard of Oz, one moment of sort of philosophical reflection that she has as she's melting her accidental death by Dorothy's bucket of water. What a world, what a world, she says. God, what a world. Channels two, four, and five show me her bruises and her wounds every night, every morning. To quote the writer Anne Lamott, 
What a heartbreaking, terrifying freak show. She's my age and is. We weren't born yesterday. We've seen what we've seen, all the wars of our lifetimes. We've had losses, pets, friends, family members, things, honor, bands of tornadoes that don't just ravage Kansas and Oklahoma anymore. That sad calendar of anniversaries that we continue to mark, Columbine to Sandy Hook to Covenant School, the blood-soaked ground of what we have called the Holy Land, college-age sons lost in a night, cancer diagnoses emerging from the laughter over botched AI photographs. You and I, just now, we've taken our dramatic part in the Passion Gospel. Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. This is my body. This is my blood. Truly, I tell you, this very night you will deny me three times. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? What a world. To make our way through it, well, we have those close to us. That's what we have like Jesus' companions who traveled with him for three years or so and shared bread with him, shared hardships and miracles, we have our circle of the ones we trust most, the ones we can call if something goes really wrong, call if we need them to meet us at the hospital, the ones whom maybe we helped pull through by making them a cup of tea or taking them to Target, or distracting them by commiserating about college football. And we can look up, step outside the front or the back door, look at the sunrise if you are an early bird, or watch the sunset deepen on the horizon. Take in the tulips and the red buds and the lilacs. Look up at the stars in the sky and try to number them on a clear night. Watch the full moon cast everything in the yard with a silver glow. And you might be wondering about now, how does any of that make a difference when the world is losing its mind? What difference will that make for people losing homes or livelihoods to climate change? What difference will that make for the people in war-shredded, reduced-to-gravel places? If you believe in quantum theory, in chaos theory, let's say the butterfly effect, that the flapping of a butterfly's wings in the azaleas in my yard can have some effect on the weather in Tokyo, then maybe this is possible, that noticing the beauty of God's work, God's world, the fluttering of our wings or the fluttering of our hearts might change things in ways we cannot imagine. To quote Anne Lamott, maybe goodness is quantum. That prayer, which doesn't seem to actually do anything, does. That the tiny good things we do right where we are make a difference. That everything is connected. Go ahead and feel your feet on the ground, solid. We're standing at the foot of the cross. There's wreckage if we look up at that cross. Wreckage all around in dashed dreams or fear of what's next. But our feet are planted, and we do our version of what the disciples and the women did 2,000 years ago in the wake of the crucifixion. We do what's at hand. We watch the iris buds every day. We bring a box of food to second harvest. We pick up trash from the road in front of the house. We take an elderly neighbor's newspaper from the street to the front doormat effect on the other side of the world or not, those things do our insides good. This is the story we will hear this week, this holy week. What God does with bankrupt religion and autocratic emperor-worshipping government power. What God does to redeem people from themselves, Fearful, sorrowful, starving, angry, grieving, mistake-making people. God takes the worst humans deal to one another and, well, takes it. Hosanna, God save us. Save us, O oh God, save us. 
and God does. Jesus did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but instead emptied himself, humbled himself, and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. God in Jesus goes on to do what we cannot and never could do for ourselves. He gathers up human sin into his emptied out self and lets the oppressors nail it to a tree. Here we are, about to kneel together for Holy Communion, and as we reach for the bread Jesus breaks for us and the wine Jesus pours for us, God help us remember God is in the business of raising up. God releases captives and feeds the hungry and heals the broken and raises the dead. Jesus' pals who desert him and the women who weep at the edges, in just a matter of days, they will find that they are the body of Christ, the ones who will change the world. Celebrate with me this terrible, wonderful Palm Sunday. Step outside and let your mouth drop open in wonder at the beauty of God's world. What a world. Feed the poor. Pray your prayers of hope and healing for what's gotten so broken. Watch this week with Jesus. Walk with him to Jerusalem and to Gethsemane and to Golgotha. Remember how it turns out in the end. Hosanna. Save us, we pray. God, come quickly to save us. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 358 of your Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning, Christ Church. I have a few announcements for you this morning. First, welcome. If you are visiting with us this morning on this uh, really spectacular Palm Passion Sunday, we're very glad that you've walked in the door. Or if you're joining us online, welcome. 
We have uh, gift bags at the back that we would love to send you out the door with. Uh, if you're visiting with us from inside Nashville, you're a Nashvillian and you um, are checking us out, we want to send you out with one of those bags. And if you are visiting us from out of town, also take one home with you um, and take a look at uh, what we have to offer on the website as well. This is the week the church calls holy. I want to encourage all of you to look at our schedule of services coming up this week. Attend as many of them as you can. Walk with Jesus to Jerusalem and to the cross. For the Easter Vigil service this Saturday evening, a big service, please bring with you, get this, a bell of some sort, right? Um, this, there's a place in the liturgy when we make the Easter acclamation and we make a joyful noise along with that. So, you know, it could be a, a ring of keys, but if you have a little bell at home, that, that really makes the noise. So put that on your list. Please check out the signups for Eastertide dinner groups. Hospitality is in the air, and this is a short-term commitment, so I urge you to give this a try. Um, just through late spring and early summer in Eastertide, we will roll out dinner groups again in the fall, but I urge you to, let's, let's do this beta test. Let's see what, what we can put together in the way of people sharing dinner and fellowship in your homes or in a restaurant. Take note too, we've been announcing this, that the Easter Sunday early service will be at 7 a.m. for those early birds and not the usual 7.30. So 7 a.m. Easter morning. Breaking Bread at 6 tonight, as usual, the, the Palm Passion version of Breaking Bread at 6. Um, there's an event that you can sign up for, Linking Arms for Change. Um, I have a little flyer here. You may have seen the announcement that came through with Happenings. It's on the website as well. Um, so you can sign up, and Christchurch Cathedral is one of the organizations that when you, when you sign up for it, you can click to, to join our group. Um, marking the one-year anniversary of the Covenant School shooting and um, gathering together with lots and lots of Nashvillians to stand out together. This is also perfect timing this Wednesday, March 27th, for this Linking Arms for Change, for you to attend the Wednesday Tenebrae service afterwards so um, we can combine some things. Now at the end of this morning's service, we're going to leave in silence. We're going to sing the entire recessional hymn we in the chancel here through up here and then when we're finished singing the hymn we will recess out and we will continue going out the doors this is to encourage you to do so as well that is leave in silence as well you can find us for conversation afterwards in the parish hall but this is how we're leaving the nave this morning let us walk in love as christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and fill them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them, and giving voice to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. and power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only son to be our savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners of freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption. Recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, 
awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be the holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share in this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ, reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, Presiding Bishop, for John, Bishop of Tennessee, and all who minister in your church. Grant them all things necessary for their common life and bless them in their proclamation of the good news of Jesus Christ through the ministry of your Holy Spirit. Remember and bless the missions of this congregation in Bolivia, Iraq, and especially for all congregational partnerships. For St. Luke, Thomasik, for St. Anselm, Nashville, and for Gordon Memorial United Methodist, Nashville. Remember, God of mercy, we lay before you all who suffer in the midst of war in Israel and in Gaza and in Ukraine. We pray that your peace and justice changes hardened hearts to break the power of violence. We pray for protection and freedom for our brothers and sisters in war zones. May our prayers for peace change our own hearts and bring peace to your beloved creation. Remember the Cathedral Search Committee as this transition ministry unfolds. Grant them wisdom and skill, patience and forbearance, devotion and a Christ-centered determination to lead the parish onward into the heart of your will for our life together. Remember and give thanks for Walker Anderson Gibbs, son of Hannah and Reed Gibbs, brother of Cooper, grandson of Cammie and John Claybrook, and great-grandson of Pixley Cheek. Remember especially Susan, Patty, Bill, Lisa, Rosemary, Alex, Nancy, Tom, Bert, John, David, Stacy, Lennon, Kathleen, Bishop Curry, Melanie, Randy, Dick, Tricia, Nancy, Bowden, Judy, Luella, Stephen, Georgiana, Jeffrey, Jerry, and Henry. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ, especially William Bill Gaston Coke Jr., husband of Fletch, father of Alice, grandfather of Preston, and brother of Esther, and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours. Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and glory forever and ever. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
We'll pray the post-communion prayer together on page 366. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us of these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.